um i think uh, uh, a lot of people uh, in us either already have some properties uh, in india or buy properties in india over time and uh, also face this situation of taxation and repatriation for these properties uh, would be great if we can cover in brief uh, some of the tax implications of real estate in india as well including capital gains and rental income yeah so as mentioned in the next slide you know treatment in india and treatment in us will be covering the us part mostly and uh, for investment in real estate yeah, i'll be discussing two situations as nishad mentioned uh, the two situations are uh, you know the rental income during the tax year and the capital gain situation when on the sale of the real property the slide on uh, you know presents the comparison of rental income treatment in india and usa for a better understanding basically for us tax purposes rental income is a passive in nature right actual expenses are allowed as deduction and depreciation is allowed just to note over here depreciation is uh, mandatory if you do not take it you know reason being you know whatever if you don't take it whenever you sell it right you have to take a dim depreciation so it's kind of if you use it use it if you don't use it you lose it right so be careful of this situation depreciation is mandatory for us purposes for the rental income and no deduction of principal paid for the resident property in india is allowed in case of india certain times you know even the principal paid is allowed as a deduction of rental income which is not allowed for the us purposes now the next slide takes you to the capital gain part you know when there is a uh sale or you know uh in the uh party into hold on one second guys i just lost my computer here okay for sale no benefit of indexation is allowed when you sell the property i think indexation is allowed in the in india for that expenses but for the us there is no indexation allowed and uh, foreign tax credit is allowed in case of real estate so if you sell a house in india and you pay the capital gains in india it is allowed and in usual case you are saying it's a long term capital gain for us purposes and also probably for the india purposes and the rates are 0 15 and 20 right so this is one point that you have to take care of right and uh, again capital gain no indexation one more time is allowed for uh, us purposes which is allowed for india purposes and on the last slide uh, we have uh, the reporting requirements uh, real estates do not have any reporting requirements so you do not have to comply with a form uh, you know fincen form 114 or form 8938 the fatca form did not mention the real property but just one note over here especially in case of inheritance if you have inherited a property a real property then you want to file the timely form 3520 which is again a compliance form right to get the step up basis because step up step up basis is a very important part you know it's something that you don't do not want to miss when you are doing your us tax return because it's kind of a tax break there yeah, very less tax breaks in us tax law this is one of the tax breaks right and uh, you know before we go ahead you know i just like to put this point that there are two parts you know the tax part and the compliance part i i suggest that everybody know the penalties of non compliance right or inequitable compliance and which are substantially high so we recommend that you know you provide all the information to your tax preparers to avoid those penalties because penalties sometimes become uh, you know so high that the tax doesn't matter anymore you know it's the penalty side that really is very discouraging this is all from us hope you gained the valuable insight on taxation and foreign investments again thank you mr dan hemant and for such a nice platform that you developed for our community back here and uh, hope everybody takes a good advantage of uh, you know this platform thank you